Hey folks, welcome back to NC State Dendrology. So here to um, talk about juggling scenario or white walnut or butternut today and I'm coming to you from Prairie Ridge Eco Station. This is a eco station for the Museum of Natural Sciences in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, where we had some planted butternuts. These guys, um, there's two left of the five that were planted and they're they're not doing really well. It's a rare plant um, and the ecological requirements aren't maybe what's here in Raleigh, uh, typically more found in the mountains. But let's talk a little bit about how about this plant first. So it does have very large, like other members of the Jugland ACE, very large compound leaves. This one has got more than nine leaflets, so that will take you away from the hickories that we've learned already. Um, even Caryocordiformis has many more leaflets than that. And so primarily when you see a leaflet like this and you realize that it's in the Jugland ACE, you might think that it's black walnut. So one difference with black walnut, remember they usually have no, either a very reduced terminal leaflet or no terminal leaflet. In this case, um, Juglin scenaria has um, a pretty robust terminal leaflet and it has a pretty long petiole as well. So that's one key difference with um, butternut instead of Juglin's nigra. The leaves are also quite fuzzy, so they have trichomes um, under the leaves and um, little stellate hairs that you know probably can't see with the camera, but um, so they're fuzzy, right? Whereas black walnut is pretty sparse um, in terms of hairs on the leaves. Now, these leaves do have a really large um, petiole, and so I want to show you first of all the bark. So the bark of the tree, right, black walnut, if you remember, is very dark and furrowed, and white walnut is much paler in color. Um, scenario actually means like ashes, so could be talking about the ash-colored bark, right? It's kind of whitish. I think it does develop furrows over time, but it's not something we're seeing here. And then the other thing I want to show you, I may have to do this as a camera over, but um, looking at the leaf scar, so the leaf scar is broad and kind of triangular. This is one that's opened up. But if you have a leaf scar, you can look and there's usually um, vascular bundle scars in threes. So it looks like this one's pulled wide as this branch has grown, but it keeps a little plate on top of the leaf scar that is hairy. Um, and so hopefully you can see that. I'll also include a photo. Um, so you can see that just kind of a neat thing to know when you're trying to tell this apart from Juglans nigra. So Juglid Cenaria is a smallish tree, you know, 40 to 60 feet tall, not super large. It's much more common um, in the western part of the state, but it's a pretty unusual tree. Um, it prefers calcium soils, and so the only other place I've seen it is in the Ridge and Valley province, which is on the other side of the Tennessee side of the Smokies, right? So there's a lot of calcified and calcium-loving species there, so this is one of those. And the fruits are eaten by wildlife, but they also have been an important food for humans. They are very strong tasting, so it's not for everybody, but a um, pretty oily nut that they produce in these husks. And once again, the nuts are um, black walnut huts, as we learned, are you know kind of the size of a lacrosse ball, very smooth green husk. Um, butternut also has a smooth green husk, but the leaf, the, but the um, fruit size shape is more like a football, so kind of oblong with a smooth husk. So that's what the fruit looks like. You'll see the fruits in lab; they're they're kind of shriveled in a jar, and that's that's what we need to learn and know um, for an upcoming quiz. But I'll probably provide some other information to you as well. So um, butternut is already an uncommon or rare species because it has a specific habitat type. We don't have a lot of calcium rich soils here in North Carolina, um, but so it's already rare. It tends to like the cove forests in the mountains um, and it's also threatened by a couple of diseases. So it's threatened by butternut canker specifically and then it's also can succumb to thousand cankers disease and that's a disease that's becoming more prevalent that also impacts black walnut. Um, so far in North Carolina, it has been identified in Haywood County, and that was quite a few years ago, and it hasn't spread outside of Haywood County. So this is, you know, another reason why you should be careful and um, cognizant. You should not move firewood from one county to another, 
because you can inadvertently spread some of these diseases. These canker diseases are a fungal, a fungal type of disease. So here we are, we've got white walnut juglans scenaria um, in the juglandaceae family. Fruit type being a nut and got these really big multi-leaflet compound leaves with a nice terminal leaflet and a long petiole that attaches it to the stem. Kind of a football shaped fruit and this whitish bark that will develop ridges over time. And that's what we've got for Juggling Scenaria. Thanks for tuning in.